I am Adam. Coming up, holidays cancelled as the government advises tourists to stay away from Tunisia. Details next. Now the latest from ITV News Central in the Midlands. Hello, welcome to ITV News Central on the programme this evening. Holiday makers from the Midlands head home over fresh fears of terror in Tunisia. The mother given the heartbreaking choice of terminating one unborn twin to save the other. Up in the air, the tandem skydivers out to break a world record for fundraiser Stephen Sutton. And a toast to Tamworth's lottery winners who've scooped nearly £6 million. Hello, good evening. Hundreds of British holidaymakers in Tunisia have been making their way back to the Midlands today after the government warned that another terror attack there is highly likely. All future bookings to the country have been cancelled as tourists were warned that extra security measures put in place after last month's killings did not provide adequate protection. Michael Sivet reports. Back home much earlier than planned. This afternoon, the first holiday makers started arriving back to the UK on extra flights put on by travel operator Thomas Cook. One family heading home to Shropshire, having had their holiday cut short after receiving new Foreign Office advice. Half past ten last night, we were told to pack. We were going at five o'clock this morning. We were four, up at four o'clock and we were on our way home. So. And how did you feel about that? Well, we didn't want to go. We just didn't want to go home. What was the point of going home when we got more guards and you yeah, have tourists really. It's two weeks since 38 holiday makers were killed at a beach resort in Sousse in Tunisia. 30 of them were British. The bodies of the victims are now back with their families but until now the Foreign Office has stopped short of advising those still on holiday there to come home. But last night as the country's tourism industry continued to try and rebuild all that changed. The government announced that another terror attack is now highly likely. But it's not just those already there who've been affected by the new advice. Ellen Hicken from Derby was just three weeks away from her first family holiday abroad with her son and daughter at the Sentito La Sultan Hotel, about 75 kilometres north of where the attacks happened. After months of saving, that holiday has now been cancelled. Devastated, yeah. Uh, we heard about it. My daughter was absolutely hysterical. She'd really been looking forward to it. The, the people of Tunisia forming a human guard around the, the victims. I thought that was lovely and I thought, you know, this is, this is still somewhere they still deserve a chance, but obviously it's now all gone downhill. It's a great shame that the majority have got to suffer for the actions of the minority. After the attacks, the Foreign Office had warned of a high threat from terrorism, but many decided to stay in the country, determined not to be beaten. Now, they're being given a military escort to the airport. What worries me is that this will be seen as a victory by the people who wish us harm, and we might see a repeat somewhere else in the Mediterranean in a bid to destroy another economy. As many as 3,000 British holidaymakers on package holidays are due to be flown home in the next 36 hours. Michael Sivert, ITV News, Derby. Well, Sean Tipton from the Travel Association, APTA, joins me now. Sean, if you've got a holiday booked to Tunisia with this advice in mind, what are your options? There will be tens of thousands of people who still have holidays booked to Tunisia, a lot less than would have been the case uh, two or three weeks ago, because after these hideous attacks, we did actually say to people, if you're booked on a package, you can, if you want, transfer to another destination. And about 85% of people did do that. Having said that, there are other 15% left over who said, no, we still want to go. Now. And because of the fact the Foreign Office have said they advise against non-essential travel, that means holidays are off sale, certainly up until the 31st of October. So if you are in that position, if you, if you did say you wanted to go, well, you'll need to rebook. So the thing to do is contact your tour operator, see what your options are and if they can't come up with anything suitable then uh, they'll almost certainly give you a refund of your money. Uh, what if you didn't book it as a, as a package deal? A lot of people do that now, they book their flights and their hotels independently, where do they stand? 
about 10% of people going to Tunisia actually make their own arrangements. Uh, most people do take packages, but having said that, 10% is still a significant, uh, significant number of people. So what they'll need to do is contact the airline to see what their options are in terms of um, transferring to maybe a different destination. Airlines are usually quite flexible about that. Or secondly, uh, they'll need to speak to the people they book their accommodation with. The problem is there that if they don't travel, there'll almost certainly be a cancellation charge for that, and then you'd need to check with your insurance to see if they'll cover it. Some do, some don't. Okay, so the people who booked as a package deal, then they ought to be able to either rebook to a different destination or get a refund. If they go down the refund routes, they don't want to travel abroad, they want to stay, do a staycation this year, for example, how long would they have to wait for their refund? Most people actually will almost certainly rebook, because if you think about it, you know, you've got a summer holiday, you're looking forward to it, so you still want to, it's quite difficult to tell the kids we're not going anywhere. So I think most people will rebook, but the ones who go for the refund option, tour operators will try and do it very, very quickly, because they'll appreciate the fact that you need that money to book another holiday. Okay, Sean Tipton from Abta, we have to leave it there, but thank you very much indeed. A Birmingham club promoter who posted a video online urging fellow Muslims to stand united against terrorism following the events in Tunisia has become an online sensation. Hasib Ahmed's film has been viewed more than two and a half million times since it was posted on Wednesday. He's urging people not to scapegoat the whole religion and spreads a message of peace. Killing anybody is against Islam. Uh, it says in the Quran, killing one person is like killing the whole of humanity. Um, so don't be fooled by, by propaganda and how people sometimes scapegoat the whole religion. Comedian Freddie Starr has lost his damages claim against a woman who said he groped her when she attended a Jimmy Savile TV show when she was uh, 15 years old. The entertainer, who lives in Warwickshire, sued for slander and libel, but a judge at the High Court ruled the woman, who's now 56, had proved Mr Starr had groped and humiliated her when she was a schoolgirl. He faces a cost bill unofficially estimated at about a million pounds. A mother who was given the heartbreaking choice of terminating one unborn twin to save the other is celebrating after both survived a rare pregnancy condition. Kirsty Dean from Walsall found out after 20 weeks that her unborn babies were suffering from a syndrome which leaves one starved of vital nutrients. They both survived after having pioneering surgery at Birmingham Women's Hospital. Helen Keenan reports. Two healthy baby boys. But months before they were born, their parents were warned they might lose one or both of them. Harry and Hunter were diagnosed with twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome while in the womb, a condition which happens in one in ten identical twin pregnancies. It was hard because even now I oh know it was nothing that I did or there was anything that I could have done. I still found myself blaming myself and thinking, well, what did I do wrong? TTTS presents itself when both babies share a placenta and blood passes from one to the other. Complications arise when more blood and nutrients go to one twin, leaving the other undernourished. Kirsty was given three options. Let nature run its course, have surgery or decide which baby will survive. There was no doubt. It was like, I need to give him the chance. I'm going to go straight for the surgery because they deserve at least a chance. Kirsty chose to have breakthrough surgery here at Birmingham Women's Hospital. If the condition is left untreated, a staggering 90% of babies will die. But even with treatment, there's only a 70% chance that both babies will survive. It's called the Solomon Technique and involves lasering blood vessels in the womb to allow blood and vital nutrients to reach both twins, a revolutionary treatment pioneered in Birmingham. Even with using the, the um, technique of fetoscopic laser ablation, there was a small risk that very tiny blood vessels that you can't see could cause complications where one baby or maybe both babies are at risk of brain damage and therefore by using this new Solomon technique we're able to significantly reduce the risk. During her pregnancy Kirsty was in touch with the charity Tamba, the Twins and Multiple Births Association. It wants to set up a register to record these types of pregnancies so experts can compare which treatments are most effective. Twin to twin can re reappear at any time, even after the surgery. 
but luckily we were blessed with two healthy boys. They're mommy's little miracles, aren't you? You are. Helen Keenan, ITV News. Medical experts in Birmingham are changing the way young people with mental health issues are treated. Until now, once they hit 16, they have to transfer to adult services, but that can be hugely disruptive. From October, young people will be treated by the same teams right up until they're 25. We've been speaking to one young patient who believes it's a better way of doing things. Mark Goff reports. Ashley Wright has had mental health issues since he was 12. He's got Asperger's and chronic fatigue syndrome. The worst days were so gloomy. Everything was black and white. I was feeling suicidal. I just didn't want to be living this horrible condition that I was experiencing because there was no one there to give you a, a hug and say, it's okay, Ashley, you can do it. For the past few years, he's been getting help. But because he's now turned 16, he's got to stop being treated by experts in child mental health and start all over again being treated by adult mental health experts. There's been no support there. I feel like the net that I had under me that was being provided by the mental health service has just been taken away and now I'm free to fall at any moment. But in Birmingham, they've decided the system needs to change. From October, young people with mental health issues will be treated right up until the age of 25 if they need it. Well, previously, services had been commissioned in bits and pieces, so they didn't all join up. Um, and in particular there was a big gap between 16 and 18 years and we've known from research that's been carried out in Birmingham by the Clark programme that that's the peak incidence of mental health problems in a person's lifetime and we didn't have a service there. So, so it's going to be much better now because that gap won't be there, there won't be that, that awkward transition from young people to adult services at the age of 18 and there won't be a gap between 16 and 18. So people will be able to move through the service until they get to the age of 25 when research suggests people are um, happy to go into adult services. This new service is going to ease people's lives so much, offer that support that's in place, it just needs connecting together. The aim of the service is for better outcomes for young people with mental health conditions, so to get better, or if not getting better, to be able to manage your condition so you can get to school, get to college, get jobs, have friends and have a, a good life. And it's a good life Ashley is now enjoying. He's getting better and he'll be one of the first to enjoy this new system later this year. Mark Goff, ITV News, Birmingham. And there's plenty more news for the Midlands on our website tonight, including the story of the teenager who'd been drinking and took his dad's sports car out, then crashed it. That's at itv.com slash central. But don't go away. Still plenty more coming up on the programme before we go this evening, including the couple who say winning almost six million on the lottery won't change their life. And skydiving for Stephen Sutton. Family and friends look to break a world record. And I'll have your full Midlands weekend weather, including when it's going to be hot and when it's not next week. Now, twice as many bee colonies were lost in the West Midlands last winter compared with the previous. The drop in numbers is being put down to poor weather, disease and changes in climate. The Beekeepers Association, which is based at Stoneleigh in Warwickshire, think many of us don't know enough about how to help the honeybee. So experts there have enlisted the help of a high profile honey eater to teach us and save the livelihoods of others in the process. Albert Einstein once said, if we didn't have bees, then man would only survive for four years. Although experts now think that's not quite true, it's a worry that bee numbers are falling dramatically. Bees produce or help produce things like strawberries, cherries, apples, all, all the nice things in life. Uh, bees have got to be there to pollinate them. There are other pollinators, but by far the best pollinator is the honeybee. I've come to the British Beekeepers Association in Stoneleigh in Warwickshire, which looks after 24,000 beekeepers and their 3 billion bees. This is a fairly 
young hive. This this hive this was a result of a swarm earlier on in the year. And in there, can you see the honey in there? If you look inside there, that glinting stuff is actual a little cell of honey. Each one of those is a cell full of honey. And that, when it's full, will weigh about three pounds in weight. Wow. All the bees are enticed to the bottom of the hive so we can get to the honey safely. So here we are. You can see that there's no bees inside there now. And we're going to take this up to the kitchen and extract the honey from it. The contents from the hive are put into this machine. And in a couple of minutes, the honey is ready to eat. Look at all that lovely honey. And it seems even the bear with little brain knows how important it is to save the bees. Illustrators of Winnie the Pooh have created a new story and guide showing how we can help to improve habitats for honey making, even at Warwick Castle and in Birmingham city centre. But in a world without bees, it's not just our stomachs that would suffer. Debbie Mitchell invented the bee venom facial in Shropshire, which uses the poison of a bee sting to give a natural facelift. It's made her millions and given her a very attractive client list. There's actors, actresses, and some have been absolutely marvellous. Tessa Daly's lovely from Strictly Come Dancing. Danny Minogue is a great big fan and they tweet often. Kylie's tweeted and we've got other celebrities like Simon Cowell loved it. He wanted the, the bee venom. At this time of year, one of these hives contains in the region of 60,000 bees, not far off the population of Hereford. They're worth in the region of 600 pounds and 18 months ago, thieves tried to steal this one from a Warwickshire beauty spot. But what a difference 18 months makes. At this moment in time, spread between the four hives, there are probably between 80 and 90 pounds of honey. And, and weather like this, it's coming in like you wouldn't believe. And the, the reason, yes, is, is the huge amount of, of flora that there is around. Um, with the way that the grounds are being developed now, with a, a huge increase in, in the natural flora and fauna, um, it's going to be even better for the bees. There's definitely a buzz about the new meadow at Compton Verney, which has helped to increase bees and other wildlife. And now with new technology allowing us to track bees via GPS, it's hoped the decline will be halted. So that like Winnie the Pooh's story, this one will have a happy ending for the bees. Technical question, point of order about that report. How do you extract the bee venom for the bee Face masks. It's important to point out that no bees were harmed in the making of that piece. Right. Um, apart from one that stung the cameraman, actually. Okay. But that was his fault, not All the right. bees. Okay. Um, but uh, yes, bee venom is extracted by the bees are encouraged to sort of sting, but not lose their sting on right. a window pane. And then extract and it like that? Do it, and that's how they extract it. I think it's quite labour intensive. I don't know a lot about it. It's probably all we need to know. Yeah, about it's it. probably all we need yeah, to know. Good. Yeah, good. Uh, and yeah, bee venom facials. There nice. you go. Whatever next. Now, <laughs> well, winning the lottery, actually. You could afford a few then, couldn't you? <laughs> you could, yeah. you could indeed. A couple from Tamworth are celebrating after winning almost £6 million on the national lottery. Yes, Dawn and Malcolm Bosworth were enjoying the champagne lifestyle today after landing the jackpot. Dawn, who was a factory worker, and Malcolm, who worked in a loading bay, have both quit their jobs. The couple are planning one or two big purchases, but say their win won't change them. We still haven't come down yet, still on cloud nine. We don't really, we haven't come back down to earth yet, but, you know, we <laughs> care who it is, you know, it, it know. is a life changing thing, but the thing is, is we're not going like, to change, gonna we? change. We're, we're, well, we'll get a new house, we'll get a new car, you know, but as for anything else, we'll just go on holiday and we'll just uh, spend time with the kids, the grandkids and that's it. I know we're not we're going to uh, do anything stupid with it, you know. Uh, we're not going to buy helicopters or aeroplanes and things like that. I can't fly an helicopter, can't fly a plane, so I'll just, we'll just be our normal selves, you know. New house, new car, <laughs> give up our jobs, but it won't change us. Brilliant. Let's get some cricket now, and Warwickshire's Ian Bell has helped put England in a dominant position on the third day of the first Ashes test in Cardiff. Uh, Bell ended a bad run of form by scoring a half century. Getting to it off the bowling of uh, Mitchell Johnson. He was eventually out for 60. England currently 287 for eight. That's a lead of 409 with two wickets remaining. 
The next Olympic Games might not take place until next year in Rio, but the event that originally inspired the birth of the modern games has been going on in Shropshire this week, although you could be forgiven for having not known that. Well, as our sports correspondent Steve Clamp reports, the Wenlock Olympian Games don't seem to have benefited from the worldwide interest that surrounded them in 2012. A beautiful summer's day in a picturesque Shropshire town. Not quite the buzz you'd expect at the Olympic Games. But then the Wenlock Olympian Games might have inspired the Olympic movement, but it's never enjoyed the same following. <laughs> Although back in 2012, from the moment the torch passed through until the end of the London Olympics, everyone was talking about much Wenlock. Steve McWalters is the president of these games and recognises that despite worldwide attention three years ago, significant gains in support haven't materialised. Our aim here is to make sure that everybody knows that um, William Penny Brooks uh, was the inspiration for the modern Olympics and um, and that we keep those games going. They've been going since 1850. Uh, our role here is to make sure that legacy continues. But, you know, we're not about becoming the next Olympic Games. Cricket was played at the first Wenlock Olympian Games and has been back here for nearly a decade. You were here and very much around it when everyone from around the world was flooding here in 2012. Do you think that success has managed to spill over into to games since then? It it was it, there was a lot of people who, who turned up for that year. I mean, I, I believe that we're still shown on Chinese television every year playing quick cricket. But um, I think that after the Olympian Games, it has started to recede a little. What can be done to grow the games for the good of all of Much Wenlock as a whole is unclear, but certainly capitalising on its rich history is key. Old Dr Brooks invited the young Cooperton to come to Much Wenlock and see what he'd set up, see his Wenlock Olympian Games. He planted this fantastic oak tree. Cooperton was so thrilled with everything he saw, he went away and he set up the modern international Olympic Games we know today. The children here today certainly had fun, but are they aware of the significance of these games? Um, not really much. Do you know anything of it? Uh, not really, no. And what about you? I learned all about it in year four at Boxing. So. One out of three is a start. Yeah. There might not be big crowds, but they do get visitors from as far afield as Singapore and Australia. And on Sunday, two and a half thousand are expected for the highlight of the event, the athletics. <laughs> Steve Clamp, ITV News. Great weather for it. And a skydiving world record has been broken in memory of Staffordshire teenager Stephen Sutton today. More than 400 people took part in the attempt for the most tandem skydives in one place in 24 hours. Well, Stephen, you'll remember, raised over £5 million for the Teenage Cancer Trust, getting his name in the record books before he passed away from cancer last May. His family says he always wanted to take part in an event just like this. Nancy Cole reports. With a big smile on her face, Jane Sutton soars. Today, she was one of over 400 people trying to break a world record in her son Stephen's memory. My face was very, very happy. This is an incredible tribute to Stephen. I think it's just amazing that there's you know, 400 plus people who've signed up to do a skydive and it's Stephen that's inspired them all. Skydiving was something Stephen from Burntwood in Staffordshire had put on his bucket list when he was told his cancer was incurable. He went on to do it twice. Before he died last May, he'd planned to take part in a tandem parachute event just like this. And it's why today is so special. He was going through a cancer journey himself, but from day one he was positive and I think um, he, he passed that positivity on to so many people. But also, he also taught people how to, you know, carry on, how to live their lives, really. It was a message of live life to the full, seize every minute. And that's exactly what supporters had in mind as they kitted up to jump. All funds raised today will go to the Teenage Cancer Trust, which in Stephen's lifetime he raised over £5 million for. 
By late afternoon, the skies littered with parachutes. Things were on target to not only break, but smash the record. I think he would have just said it was absolutely awesome to kind of see people living his legacy and people who would never usually do a skydive going and experiencing something new and really living life. I think, you know, he'd feel absolutely amazing about it. That was absolutely fantastic. Oh, well worth it, well, well worth it. Stephen wanted to break a world record, being the world, Guinness World Records, and I think we've broken it, and his legacy is living on. And with a thumbs up for Stephen from those today, there's not just a legacy, but another world record to be proud of. Nancy Cole, ITV News. Good to see his legacy continuing, good stuff. Absolutely. Right, now let's take a look at the weather forecast with Janelle. Hello, it was a beautiful sunrise this morning if you were up early enough to see it, but Trevor Sutton was. Thank you very much for this picture taken in Warwickshire. Absolutely beautiful. Now, it's a beautiful start to the weekend. We are expecting it to be quite sunny and warm, but by the end, because of this cold front pushing through, temperatures are just down on where they are at the moment, and we'll be expecting to see the odd spot of rain as well. But tonight, while not as cool as some people might like it to be, because temperatures only going as low as 13 Celsius, 15 Celsius in Birmingham, meaning it's going to be humid and a bit sticky overnight. But it's a warm start to the weekend, some sunny spells to bring us in. But as that front progresses towards us, well, a bit more cloud will be introduced by the afternoon. Highs of around 20 Celsius, but it's looking like a warm day overall. On Sunday, as I mentioned, we could see the odd spot of rain begin to be introduced. That's because of that cold front. Monday and Tuesday, well, it's wetter and cooler, but by the end of next week, you'll be glad to know temperatures will recover. So there's some good news for you there. But back to tonight, it's going to be humid and sticky and your pollen counts coming up next. How are you today? <laughs> Lloyd's Pharmacy, proud sponsors of the pollen count. This weekend, the pollen count starts very high with the dry and sunny weather. As we go through the weekend into next week and the weather becomes more unsettled while the pollen count begins to fall too. Goodbye. Time for a reminder of tonight's top stories on ITV News Central before we go this evening. Midlands holiday makers in Tunisia are making their way home. After the uh, government warned that After the government terror warned there's another terror attack, there is highly likely future bookings have been cancelled as tourists were warned that extra security measures introduced after the massacre two weeks ago didn't provide adequate protection. Comedian Freddie Starr has lost his damages claim against a woman who said he groped her when she attended a Jimmy Savile TV show when she was 15. The entertainer who lives in Warwickshire sued for slander and libel. He faces a cost bill unofficially estimated at about a million pounds. And the 129th Wenlock Olympian Games is on in Shropshire. The Games originally inspired the birth of the modern Olympic Games. Well, that's all about from us tonight. The National Internet and National News is on the way next. Matt can't say anything because of a technical issue, <laughs> but we'll be back at 10.30 tonight with the late update. Hope you can join us then. From Matt and me, bye-bye.